I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on IGCSE Math. Now, many of our subscribers and viewers are not very familiar with the terms upper and lower bound. So, I thought I'll take up this video to bridge up the gap. So, we'll try to understand the concept of upper and lower bound with the help of rounding principles, which we already know. So, we'll actually take up the concept of rounding and then see how it is related with upper and lower bound. So here are two examples for us. First one is what set of numbers round to the nearest 100 as 300? And the second question here is what set of numbers round to nearest 1 as 6? Right. Once we understand this link between rounding and the upper and lower bound, then we'll take up more examples, which will be like this. We'll actually understand how to round two significant figures. Now, significant figures are also the terms which are normally not used by many students. So that should help us to bridge the gap. And then we'll talk about one significant figure. Once you understand what is rounding to two significant figures, one significant figure is not difficult to understand. It's kind of similar thing, right? And then we'll take a practice exercise. And while we are working with the rounded figures this time, so we'll work with the rounded figures and we'll try to figure out what is the upper bound and lower bound for each number given, right? So that is the kind of work which we are going to do in this particular video. I hope that will give you very good insight to the topic of... <clears throat> <clears throat> lower and upper bound right and after this we will see in the next video how in calculations we could have minimum or maximum value from the lower and upper bound and that's where it gets slightly more difficult and interesting so let's begin with the very basic concept now and let's try to understand how is this uh, rounding related with the upper and lower bound okay so, as I was saying, what set of numbers round to the nearest 100 as 300? So, on a number line, we have all the numbers, correct? We are talking about a number which is 300. Now, what numbers will round to 300? Now, from the rounding principles, we know that any number which is 50 plus and minus can be rounded to 300, right? So, the number, the lowest number which could round to 300 is 250, correct? So 250 rounds to 300. And the on the upper hand, the limit is uh, 349.999, like this, correct? So on the upper side, 349 point whatever, will actually round to 300, right? So that is our rounding principle, correct? All these numbers round to 300. Now, when we talk about upper and lower bound, then this lower limit, 250, is termed as the lower bound. So this is the lower bound for us. Is it okay? So lower bound is kind of exactly same as what rounds to the number, the minimum number which rounds to the number. Perfect. As far as the upper bound is concerned, we kind of write it as 350. Since, you know, writing these nines means extremely close to 350. Perfect. So, so upper bound and lower bound, as you can see, are slightly different uh, from our rounding principles since the upper limit, which should have been 349.999, will actually be treated as 350 as the upper bound, right? So what we also do here is we use a nomenclature. This type of a bracket means included, right? So the lower bound is included, but the upper bound is not included. So we write a bracket like this. So this bracket means 350 not included. Do you understand? Not included. However, for our calculation purpose, we always will take 350 as the upper bound. Do you get the idea, right? So we understand it is not included, but 349.999 is very close to 350. So we treat this as upper bound. It does make sense to you. So that's how we'll be doing it, right? Uh, 
Next example here, we've just taken a smaller number this time, and the number is 6. Now, this number 6, what numbers could round to 6? Well, numbers which we could round to 6 will be 5.5, uh, 5, right? So, if I write 5.5, 5, we know, including 5.5, 5, it rounds to 6. On the other hand, we can go very close to 6.5. 4999, correct? Something like this. So we see that the lower bound in this case is equal to 5.5 and the upper bound is 6.5. And we represent them like this on a number line. 5.5 .5 is included and that is with a bracket, which means normally not included. Does make sense to you, right? So in short, that is how it is. Now, let us also talk about how did we decide on adding or subtracting 50. Now, when we are saying in this particular case, we are rounding to hundreds, then what we normally do is we do 100 divided by 2. So, which is equal to 50, right? Here, we are rounding to one's place. This is one's place, right? So, we divide 1 by 2 and we get 0 0.5. And that is how we decide on these numbers, what numbers should be plus and minus. Do you see that? So, these numbers should be plus and minus to get us the upper and the lower bound. Perfect. So, I hope with this, we can move on and take some examples. So, one link between rounding and upper and lower bound, I hope, is absolutely clear. Let's move on and take uh, some rounding numbers. So as an exercise, we'll see round to two significant figures. Now this term, two significant figures, written in short as 2SF, is also new for many of our subscribers, right? So let's try to understand. Now significant means most important, right? Think like this, most important. So when we say second most important, then in these numbers which I have given you, what is the second most important? Well, the second most important is from the left, the second one. Do you see that? So in this case, 0.4. In this case, this is the first one. That number is the second most important. In this case, 6 is second most important. 2 is second most important. In this case, this 2 is second most important. It does make sense to you. So rounding to significant figures rounding to second two significant figures that means we are rounding to this number which is thousands right so what are we going to do we are going to round this number and since seven is more than five we'll make it 99,000. do you do you understand that so that is what it will be in this case, we are rounding to this number 4, looking at the number next to it on the right side, so that gives us 3.5, correct? Here, we are rounding to 3, so that gives us 0 0.023, right? So, we will drop these numbers since 4 is less than 5. So, we follow the normal rounding uh, principles which we have learned. However, let's understand the significant figure number. It is taken from left, right? So, most significant, most important, from the left side we go, right? So, this is the first significant, second, third, fourth, fifth, like this. I hope the concept is clear. So, taking that into consideration, you can route these to two significant numbers. And here we'll get 27. Here, here we get 120. In this case, that means to tens, right? And in this case, we are talking about tens and hundreds. So it is 0 0.12. So that is how you're going to round to two significant figures. I hope that is absolutely clear, right? So let's move on and take now one significant figure. Means most significant, right? Absolutely most significant. So most significant is the very first digit right when you see from the left side you have to exclude these zeros they are placeholders so take these as placeholders right so so these are the most significant digits rounding to this gives you 300 in this case gives you 5000 here gives you the number as 0 0.003 because that is 5 
this number becomes 20. Uh, so because this is 2, so it is 30, right? So one more, right? 2.9 gives you 3 and this gives you 0 0.2. So that is what is the meaning of one significant figure. Is that clear to you? Now I hope we have got the concept of upper and lower bounds. We have also understood how the rounding and uh, upper lower bounds are related. We have also seen what is rounding to significant figures, right? And to decimal places, you know. We'll apply these principles to answer these four questions now. State the upper and lower bound of each of the following. The numbers are rounded as given in the bracket. So the first number is 5140 rounded to three significant places, right? That is four. So you check from the left side. So that is your third significant place. Rounded to two significant places is 74 and rounded to one significant place is 20. So that means two, right? And this number is rounded to one decimal place that is 0.6. You need to now write down the upper and lower bounds for these. Okay, so let's look into what kind of rounding was done. So when we say three significant places, we are counting first, second and third number and that is in tens, right? So 10. So this place is the tens. We'll divide this by two. So that means we have to do plus or minus five, correct? To get a lower and upper bound. Is it okay? In the second case, rounding to two significant places, 74. Now four happens to be in one's place, right? So one divided by two will give us plus minus 0 0.5. Rounding to one significant place, that means we're looking at two, right? So 2 is in tens place, so it is 10 divided by 2. So we'll do plus minus 5 here, right? Half of 10. Rounding to one decimal place is 0.6, right? So it is 0 0.1, that is tenths, right? So divided by 2 gives us 0 0.05. So these are the numbers to work with to get our upper and lower bound, correct? So let's get the upper and the lower bounds for each one of them. I would like you to pause the video, answer your question, and then look into my suggestions, right? So let's write down the lower bound first. So when you do lower bound, you have to take away. So number has to be smaller, right? So in this case, smaller by five. So it will be equal to five, one, three, five. And the upper bound is going to be a bigger number, bigger by five. So it'd be five, one, four, five, correct? That is how you're going to get it, perfect. Now the next one here, we have to add and subtract 0 0.5, so we get 73, I mean, let me write lo lower bound first, then I'll write 73.5, and the upper bound for us is 74.5, perfect. Now here we have 20, and the number is rounded to one significant place, we'll round, so we'll add plus and minus 5. So the lower bound in this case is 15 and the upper bound is 25. Perfect. In this case now, tell me, what is the lower bound and the upper bound? Round to one decimal place. <clears throat> so, 10th has been divided by 2. 0 0.05 has to be added and subtracted. So we get 3.55 as the lower bound and 3.65 as the upper bound. Perfect. So I hope you understand now how to find upper bound and the lower bound in the given condition when we know that the numbers are approximate, they're rounded numbers, right? Now in the next video, we will see what could be the maximum error or what could be the minimum value uh, when we work with these rounded numbers, perfect? So I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.